Um, actually, Adam, as long as I get in here at exactly 10 o'clock, which it's still 10 o'clock, it's not 10.01 yet, I made the, the time there. It was funny, everybody. Adam Squatch, welcome to the later Sunday Night Live show, the second edition of the Sunday. We're going to try to start doing this uh, more often. Um, I have realized that uh, for the, some of the people in Europe, etc., it might be a little bit better if I were to start the show kind of like at midnight. Um, so going forward at times when I can uh, simply put, am able to do that, I will. I've got a, an audition in Vancouver, callback audition and meeting a director tomorrow. So I'm going to have to start this one at 10, as we uh, posted earlier. Uh, Mio Kwala, what's up? How you doing? I'm doing well. How you doing, my friend? Oh, Chris Maddox, I'm just reading some of the older uh, messages. That one was sent at 9.54, six minutes before the start of the show there. Um, yeah, you will be very happy uh, with a 600-watt metal halide HPS set up. You're running two of those. Two double squatches are drawn 620. Um, you will be shocked at the difference in uh, the heat that they give off, my friend. Hell yeah. I mean, you know, and the fact is, callback auditions are good. So, you know, I mean, I might. I, it's, it's a commercial, which, you know... Um, the money can be decent on those and, and, and not too bad. And uh, it seems to be kind of a cool commercial, kind of a public service thing or something. I don't know. But uh, so I'm going to go in for an audition call back tomorrow and to meet the director. So who knows? Maybe it'll go well. Um, Lord knows my bank account wouldn't mind having a, another acting gig. There we go. Sorry, I meant to brush my beard before the start of the show, but I didn't get a chance to uh, make myself pretty. So. Thank you very much, uh, James uh, Scanlan. So we all liking these uh, pre-booked things that, uh, what's up, Rick Rees, how you doing? What's up, Charity Spurlock? And thank you very much for the wishes of good luck. Adam, do you have, uh, I can't, I can't even message it to you. Crap. My wife's texting me, but I'm in the show now. I can't respond. Eh, that's okay. I'll talk to her when she gets home from work. <laughs> um, also, too, who was it just now? New to the Army. Curious about the, the lights. Uh, Chris Maddox. Are you still there, Chris? You still there, Chris? Well, Adam, if you had her number, you could. But, I mean, the only way I have of messaging you the number would be through this, and then everyone would have her number. But if you ever on, and you don't have Instagram, do you either? Okay, Chris. So, um, remember how you were talking about uh, your two 600-watt metal halides and just that the heat has been astronomically huge on the output of your lights there, and, and you're just not having fun with those heat signatures. I did this fun little test in the live stream last night, but I'm going to do it again for you because, well, one, it's pretty funny. So, uh, Chris... Like I said, the double squatch uh, at maximum uh, recommended output setting, uh, 620 draw, okay? Okay, Adam, text my wife. Uh, tell her, uh, in a live stream show, I can't text. Tell her, awesome, super proud of you get for getting uh, more PA work tomorrow. Uh, and tell her I got a callback audition in the morning. And don't worry about getting me to the train. Uh, Robert's going to pick me up. But back to the show. All right, so, Chris, my friend, are you still there? There we go. Um, as you see here, these are two double squatch rigs here. Uh, a double is being powered by a single 480-watt driver. This is this driver, the Meanwell drivers, uh, are adjustable. It's like an engine. The 480 is more like a branding label to it. So we are running, uh, if you want to run these full out, our recommended full out pedal to the metal is at 620, okay? So... Chris, can you do this to your lights? You see what I'm doing there? You see that, Chris? I'm holding my hand on the fixture. See that, Chris? It's still there, Chris. See, Chris? Hey, Chris. You see that, Chris? I'm still holding it. And we're going to talk for a while. I'm going to keep holding this here as a test just to show a point of what these rigs are. Yes, they do put off heat. They do get warm. But again, my hand is still on this thing. I'm holding it. I've got my hand up on top of the heat sink, and I'm good. Do you see what I'm saying? 
So they're definitely a huge difference in terms of the heat output, okay, uh, that you're getting off your 600 watt metal halide HPSs. And I'm going to guarantee you that this is certain, most certainly going to outperform a 600 watt metal halide or an HPS in terms of your flowering final components. You're going to maximize your gram per watt. One second, everybody. One second, everybody. No, I can't do it. Adam? One second. My phone's being weird. Crap. Fuck. One second, everybody. God damn it. There we go. I'm back now. I think, yeah, there we go. Adam, did you get a hold of my wife? Sorry about that, everybody. I just can't respond to her. And it's like I texted her before I started the show to be like, okay, baby, I'm in a live stream show now. And yet it still happens. It is. The cat's in here patrolling. We were doing defoliation. I've got to do some tidying up in here. I didn't get that in between the shows, but that's all right. Tomorrow will be a uh, one week of flower update there. Our little uh, bud clusters are starting to form. By two weeks, we should see some very sexy developments on these ladies there. I'm very excited about that, you know. So that'll be good. Well, exactly, Chris. And you know what? I, I did that. Yes, is it a little dramatic? Yeah, a little bit. But the fact is, well, one, I am a professional actor and a filmmaker and a writer and a comedian. But two, when you were talking about the heat issues that you were having, I thought that would be a fun way to show you what I'm talking about. Yes, uh, Chris Maddox, uh, this, uh, the double squash unit is, is, is our answer to replacing HPSs. Um, compare that th this is our biggest one right so like i would put a bunch of these together if i was taking on a bunch of thousand watt hpss i'd be using double squatches to do that uh i am scooby-doo says i am having seed issues right now but soon as i work that out i will grow with uh you unk. hell yeah scooby-doo what seed issues are you having just just acquiring them i'm assuming that can also be very tricky at some times yeah i hate it too it's the ringtone that came with my phone and i never changed it uh meal Kwan. No, no, no. It's not an emergency. She was texting me while this live stream's been going. It's okay. And Adam Squatch is on it. He'll contact my wife for me. You're a great Padawan, Adam Squatch, and I love you. Thank you for all the help that you do in my world. I'm from Maine, living in Missouri. Love the voices you do. Well, thank you very much. That's just me. I do that all the time. I didn't invent that for the YouTube. It just basically is kind of how I am all the time, whether I'm bartending or whatever job I'm doing. I'm just doing that. This lens seems to be a little dirty, so I'm trying to clean it a little bit. Well, that did fuck all. I'm still ugly. There we go. <laughs> hey! Uh, no, it should be okay. I'm just waiting for Adam to come back and say that he got a hold of my wife. Ah! So it did get rid of the H2O2 did remove it. And I've got a feeling, Dirt... That the, uh, the hydrogen peroxide actually, in fact, would kill whatever the fuck was going on there. I wasn't sure. It was weird. It was a new one for me. Uh, in between shows, dirt, uh, everyone was sending me some pictures of some weird shit on his leaves that we were seeing there. And it was weird. Unlike certain, like similar to certain things, but again, kind of its own thing that I'd never quite seen exactly. But, you know, hey, there we go. Uh, KJ Grows, again, one day we will hopefully be eventually uh, releasing seeds. We are doing a bunch of breeding on this run. So is Adam Squatch. Adam Squatch and I are working together to release one day when we can do it legally in this country. Right now, well, we're just legally me legal medical growers with our permits. Uh, so we're just developing them for ourselves at the moment. But uh, we, will, we do hope to bring seeds to market one day. Um, with the legislature change that will be coming up, I'm hoping, in uh, our election coming up, uh, hopefully they restructure how... Prohibition 2.0, the supposed bullshit legalization works, and it'll be a little bit more accessible and easier for other people to get into uh, the industry. So here, there we go. What's up, mo dude, for 20? Got a bunch of people in Missouri in the house. Hell yeah. I'm back for the second live stream. Yeah, he is. Too drunk, too sloppy. Loving it. Uh, yeah, just bring her quick. No, no, no. Adam, Adam, Adam will get back to me. I have faith. What's up, Ashley King? Any relation to Jimmy King, Ashley King? I went to school with the Jimmy King back in the day. That's why I ask. Uh, 
Unk, I'm starting to harvest my autos. My biggest plant, Gorilla Glue, has uh, the track chromes uh, and looks great, but there is very minimal aroma. My smaller cookies are fire. What the fuck? Well, uh, milk, Juana, that could be a genetic thing that's going on. Um, it could also be a functionality of certain things that were required during uh, the growing of that, right? Because so smell and taste, uh, one, is good is, is having good genetics that'll have a good terpene profile to them in their phenotype. Uh, but also, two, it is very much how you've taken care of the plant throughout the life of the plant, all right? So um, that's why that is also fairly important. Uh, so it could just be a genetic thing, though, right? Right, Modu 420? Rock and roll. Double tap. <laughs> hey. You know, Scooby-Doo, I do think uh, Florida is eventually, I'm assuming we're talking about Florida when you say FL, and uh, I really do have faith that eventually they're going to turn things around. Betty, what are you doing? What are you doing? It's just a corner. Leave it alone, baby girl. Just my little puppy being silly. How do you regulate the watts in the wall? I don't want too many plugs plugged in. Help. Uh, Dylan Metz, can you please give me a little bit more information in terms of what your question means? Uh, I, I think I can help you definitely, uh, but I need to understand your question a little bit uh, better. What was the strongest strain you've ever grown? Um, well, I never grew this strain, but I've smoked it and I've been trying for, uh, well, 17 years to get it. Um, it's a very coveted strain. It comes from BC. It's called Kootenai Gold. It is, to my knowledge, the strongest THC strain in the world. Um, it has tested a THC saturation content of over 43% on certain phenotypes. Um, this shit is absolutely insane. It's called Kootenai Gold. It's almost impossible to get. <laughs> I've been working for many years <coughs> to try to get a couple of seeds or a cutting of it. Um, but eventually, I will get that. One day, I might have to go up to Nelson and make friends in a bar to get it, to be honest. But uh, there we go. White Feather Grow, Oklahoma in the hizzy. Welcome, White Feather Grow. Uh, yes, Rico Buds, don't split the stock. I'm not a big fan of stock splitting. Micro agitation with the pin, though, on all the stocks. And go step it down. That's really good to help it trike out. Also, pulling a lot of those fan leaves uh, in the last week or two, uh, it's going to help those buds tighten up as well as trigger some of that triking out as well. Um, also, drop your temps at the very last. Uh, I like to give them 48 to 72 hours of darkness before harvest. Uh, super chill them during that point. Uh, when doing a heavy pluck of fan leaves uh, as a technique in the last week or two, watch for Hermine. For some unstable genetics, that could get a little fucked up, and et cetera. Uh, well, Dylan Metz, it's not the wattage that you're drawing, really, that's going to be your issue. Uh, it's your amperage, okay? I don't know where you're from, but here in Canada, uh, most breakers built into a standard home uh, are 15 amp breakers, okay? So it's about your amperage draw that's going to trip your breaker, okay? Wattage has to do with, you know, power, obviously, uh, and what you're going to spend on it, but... To put it simply, your amperage is what you're really going to want to look at. So, Dylan, uh, you're going to have to check what the amperage rating or amperage draw of your unit is. Going with a 600-watt LED, like uh, I'm assuming it's a blurple LED that's not like a true at-the-wall 600. If it's that, it's probably drawing 1.9 to 2.1 amps, which is a fart in a windstorm in terms of 15-amp breaker. So I wouldn't really worry too much uh, if that's the case. Um, especially if you're just running uh, some fans and all of that, I wouldn't worry uh, because, you know, technically, like here anyway, 15 amp breaker has lots of room on it too. So, Oh, no, for sure, Mikwala, but it could also be that it required a slightly different dietary thing to get those terpene profiles, but from the sounds of it, um, it sounds more like it was just a genetic uh, phenotype thing, if you know what I'm saying. No worries, Dylan Metz. 100% happy to help. That's what we're here for. Uh, hey, Albany County, and why isn't prosecuting anything under an ounce? I guess it's baby steps. Well, exactly, Chris Maddox. That is a baby step, and that's a wonderful thing. So congratulations on that. Uh, Eat Chicken says, could I email you a picture of my plant, and maybe you could help me figure out what's wrong, Posquatch. Hard to explain, but my fan leaves stopped growing at the edges. Hell yeah. Uh, Eat Chicken, send me some pictures, and I'm happy to give you my two cents. Uh, Posquatch420 at gmail.com. Hitting a little mix of Cushy Kush uh, and Gorilla Glue 4 topped with 
uh, a bit of Elixir CBD. Very nice, Mo Dude for 20. Sounds very sexy. Uh, that's too t- too much THC for me. I'm more about lower THC smoking uh, a little more if needed, so I have more control. No, I feel you too drunk, too sloppy. Um, but the Kootenai Gold is just a thing of beauty. It's a natural freak of wonder. Um, and that's why I need it for my genetic collection, because I would like to use it in some of my eugenics programs as well, because I think I've got a few things that I could intermix with that to make a 22% CBD strain while still trying to maintain that 40 plus THC saturation content. So, uh, Raymond, you're, you're right as long as, but if you know which, uh, which, uh, plugs are being fed into which breaker, you're more than fine with 15 on most setups for most small setups. Um, I've not only, uh, do are all my different sockets on dedicated breakers in there, um, I've got room to add in new breakers into my house and room on my amperage uh, or my, my, my service pill box, as it were, that feeds the power into my home. So I, I, can, I could expand. I could also switch out some of the 15s into that room into 20s. I just haven't because, you know, whatever. I don't, I don't need the room on it right now. So, uh, Be crazy. Uh, they're they're kind of newer age strains uh, like wedding cake or Sunday driver or wedding pile those types of things. Uh, they're interesting, uh, definitely interesting hybrids. A lot of them feel very sativa dominant to me, which I'm not a fan of. Uh, but that's just me personally speaking. Um, a lot of cool nifty strains. Not really my taste uh, in terms of how they work, but that's just kind of what I'm into, right? So I've got my own tastes. No worries, eat chicken. Happy to help. Uh, yes, Glenn Earsley, we've got two double squatches currently uh, right now. We can take you in there in a minute and show you some of them. Uh, the other two will be here in a few days, and we'll be hanging those and getting rid of those HLGs, fucking finally, and getting all double squatches up there to get some real weed titties happening. So, Hey, I feel you see, Kenny. Sometimes it's medicinal, right? <laughs> ah, family life. What's up, Zeke Roderick? Uh, Zeke Roderick, the uh, the 22% CBD was achieved by utilizing the strain ACDC in my eugenics program. Uh, Sasquatch came out of a blending of ACDC and uh, Master Cushion. I, uh, I think it was a train wreck if I'm remembering correctly now. I got to check my notes but because I, I did that one a while back. But uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've never grown uh, Grape Ape uh, Chris Maddox, but I have smoked it, and I did enjoy it. I found it nifty. Oh, Adam, did you get a hold of my wife? Random question. Did you get a hold of my wife, Adam? Uh, yes, Dylan Metz. If you go to potsquatchgrowers.com, that's where you, where you buy all your hats uh, and T-shirts. So I did that backwards. T-shirt, hat. Uh, grinders and the papers will be up in the next week or so. I had to kind of get a little stirred with her supplier. I was like, I had no idea it would take this long and they apologize. So they should hopefully be on their way to us right now. I just haven't checked that email yet. So Mo dude 420. That makes me very happy because that's the thing, you know, it totally works. Oh, sorry, Adam Squatch. Did you text her or did you call her Adam Squatch? Ah, yeah, beer. To be fair, I don't know where the like button is either. I don't know how to like anything here either, Glenn. So I'm not, I don't feel bad. Well, thank you very much, uh, Zeke Roderick. I appreciate that. Ben uh, Lozano, hello from uh, CA First Grow, and it feels like I ran into every problem in the book. I had Hermes, pollinated girls, mites, stripes. Uh, I now know exactly what to look for. Got a couple of pounds of white widow. Nice. Did you get any powdery mildew or bud rot? Because if you avoided those, well, you know, you got you definitely got hit fairly good for the first round. But hey, <laughs> trial by fire, you survived. Good job. I'm proud of you. Uh, Adam Squatch, uh, as long as she texts you back, it should be fine. It might be easier just to call her. I don't know. Uh, 
You can, you know what'd be funny, Adam Squatch? Call the pub. Search uh, the dude need pub's phone number and call there. That'd be funny. Uh, Scooby Doo, we have currently already released three uh, levels of grow light. Okay, so Scooby Doo, uh, we don't just have giant lights. Uh, we have the little squatch, we have the big squatch, and we have the double squatch. Uh, so the little squatch is going to be the smallest of our lights, um, and that'd be the way you would like to go. Allison Williams in the house. What's up, Allison Williams? How you doing, girl? <coughs> Okay, so you did get Bud Rod. Ha ha! Well, you didn't get powdery mildew. Ha ha ha! Dylan Metz, I thought Adam was you. No, Adam. Adam is Adam Squatch. Adam Squatch also has his own YouTube uh, uh, channel called Adam Squatch, and uh, he is my Padawan. You're you're all my. I, I'm 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 teaching all of you who asked me to teach you. But uh, Adam and I have been working a lot recently together, and uh, I've taken him under my wing and trading him in the ways of the direct force. Just in case I get hit by a bus tomorrow, there'll be someone else to carry on leading the Pot Squatch Growers Army. But to be fair, it's going to take a pretty big bus to kill my ass. I'm pretty good at not dying. <laughs> what kind of heater do you run during winter that won't affect flowering plants during dark period? Um... Well, dirt mat off any any basic little space heater will work. You don't need to get it super warm in there. Um, <coughs> if you need to use an ambient heater, just get a tiny one. If it's got a little uh, light that turns on when you when it turns on, grab some hockey tape, grab some electrical tape, grab some duct tape. Just put a piece of tape over it, and you'll be fine. Oh, do. Oh, is that how it works, Danny Steiner? Got to exit out to do that. Oh, well, that's frustrating. YouTube, put a like button in the damn thing. Uh, Robert uh, Brisbois, actually, if you want a genetic consistency to your crop, uh, cloning is the way to go. Um, and what you're talking about is if you want to do a perpetual style harvest from seed, it does take longer to get... Uh, from seed going ready for your next crop, especially if they're not uh, like if it's not a feminized seed, you got to you know wait for gendering and all of that as well. Uh, but if you find a phenotype of, of certain strains that you really like, keep mother plants. Stop chewing the cardboard box, silly puppies. Um, then uh, keep keep the mother plants and take clones because that is the best way uh, in order for you to uh, have genetic consistency. Yes, Dylan Metz, there is three types of light or three grades of light. There is the little squatch, the big squatch, and then the biggest light, which is the double squatch. Uh, the theory behind the double squatch, it's two big squatches being powered by a 480 mean well running at 620 watts at uh, maximum optimum output. Dylan Metz, thank you very much for the compliment, but I do not like the word master. I am but a fool who knows things. What's your opinion on cob LEDs? Not a big fan of cobs. Don't like them. My lights don't utilize them for a reason. Um, one, I don't like the difference between most cobs require a 34 volt when I prefer working with 24 volt drivers. Um, and again, if one cob burns out, that fucker's a big chunk of my light. I've never been a fan of cobs. Not a cob grower. That's why we use strips in our lights because that's what we're into. Uh, need to bring you to the Cayman Islands for the re for some relaxation and some good island herbs. Big up and keep up the good work. See, uh, soon email you some pics. Hell yeah, Andrew Rivers. And I'd love to check out the Cayman Islands one day. I'm definitely down to come for a visit. Uh, Christian Gonzalez. Uh, the big squatches, I believe, are going for 309 bucks USD. Uh, the double squatch is 599 Ah, if you're looking for the lights, Dylan Metz, go to my website, scroll to the bottom of the page. The part about the on the page about the lights and the link to go to buy the lights is on the very bottom of the page, Dylan. Uh, double squatch, we did our par testing at 18 inches because, uh, well, one, because of the, uh, the cool nature of an LED, we can actually get a little bit closer. Um, our core coverage on the double squatch for flowering is a four by four with a superfluous two or three feet on, on, on the edging there. That's why putting a couple of them together works really well. 
Um, but if you'd like to see our PAR testing, okay, go check out the PAR posted PAR testing chart on the community section of this YouTube, Peter North. You can see it there. Uh, scroll down a couple of posts. It should be there. Uh, I'm going to do breeding videos. I'm not a big fan of feminized seeds. Uh, dirt, if I can avoid doing it, sometimes it's all you. It's the only thing you can do to save a genetic. Uh, so in the future, I will do uh, some feminized uh, seed videos. Uh, for now, we're just going to do some basic controlled breeding in a main flowering area so as to not contaminate your entire crop, but still knock up a few uh, branches of titties so you can get some seeds to start working and developing and stabilizing a new strain. Uh, Medi Grow Australia just dropped in to say, hey, as I'm at work, uh, I'll have to watch it later. Well, hell yeah, Medi Grow Australia, but thank you for tuning in, and I uh, much appreciation, and I hear things are looking up in Australia in terms of possible legalization and shit over there, so congrats uh, on what's coming. It sounds sexy. Uh, feminized seeds are all right. Um, you know, uh, I got Hermes because I use feminized seeds. Well, Ben uh, Liz uh, Lozano, uh, it's, it's not a definitive, okay? It could be. Uh, I don't like using feminized if I can avoid it because a feminized seed is something that we've introduced a chemical construct of some sort, all right, in order to basically, basically uh, in order to uh, force it to trigger its self-defense mechanism, okay? So it's growing nuts and then it's knocking itself up with male pollen that it's producing though out of female genetics within the plant itself, okay? So given that, um, you're fucking with it on a chemical level to affect its genetics and trigger self-defense mechanisms, which is never great. Um, and if you're doing that to an already not the most stable genetic, that can definitely increase uh, your chance of hermeing. So it's not a definitive that's why. Um, I've grown with a lot of feminized seeds that were completely fine because they came from a stabilized genetic uh, and it was okay. So it's a bit of this, bit of that, you know what I'm saying? Uh, can you grow a male plant in one gallon pot start to finish? Yeah, you definitely can. Um, you know, and you don't need tons of pollen in order to use it to propagate or to save to breed. So yeah, you, you could do that. Uh, hell come maniac. Hey, no worries, Dylan. Matt's happy to help. And, uh, unless you're talking to Adam and I'm sure Adam's happy to help as well. Uh, no, Mioquana, I wouldn't do that because we actually are close friends with a Canadian company called Canna Plates. So, um, out of respect for our friends at Canna Plates over in Alberta, I will not be releasing a rosin press, uh, because really at the end of the day, I'm just going to encourage you to go buy their shit because they've already perfected it and they've designed it and made it really well. Um, they sell plates and controllers. Um, I don't know if they ship anywhere outside of Canada currently. I, I'm going to keep con uh, gently encouraging them to do that. Um, but you take a 10 ton, uh, I like using an H frame shop press. So take a 10 ton H frame shop press, strap the plates on with the controller. Boom. You just got a 10 ton rosin press. I built mine for a little under a thousand bucks and, uh, it is built out of top of the line parts and it will outperform six ton rosin presses. You're going to go spend three grand on. Don't go, don't go buy a rosin press. That's stupid. Buy plates and controllers and put it on a press yourself. That's how to keep the cost down. Uh, Allison Williams says, I have two white widow and three northern light seeds started. They are about two weeks old right now, and I lost one seed that was uh, germinating in paper towel. The rest are good, though. Second grow ever. Hell yeah, Allison Williams. Sounds awesome. Congratulations. Don't feel bad about the lost seed. It happens. Uh, what about driving a female to the end of her life cycle so she creates her own female pollen naturally? Uh, that would work, too, Christopher Maples. Uh, however, um, you got to remember, it's still a stress-induced uh, uh, genetics. So actually by stress inducing it, uh, in the long run actually is going to create my personal opinion on the matter an even more unstable, more prone to hermine genetic than using a chemical force. Cause the chemical force is adding in an exterior variable, uh, uh, that is, you know, like colloidal silver and shit on there. Um, and into the thing to cause that. Okay. Which is actually forcing it to hermine where if you can get a plant to naturally hermit on its own through natural stressors, I don't know. I just feel that that's going to make a, a, a strain that's actually even more prone to hermeting than using something else. But that's just my humble two cents on the matter and, and my personal experience as a, as a grower and a breeder. Uh, what about driving? Uh, when we read that. Uh, what's their website? I'm in USA. Whose website? Mielquana. I'm confused. What? 
Uh, my dad tried to feminize a plant this year and was pissed because he didn't get one seed. Uh, Dirt Madoff, how was he doing it? Uh, Christopher Maples, you definitely can do that, especially if you were to connect, collect the pollen and do that. If you are uh, going to be breeding a non-feminized seed with feminized pollen, you will not get 100% feminized seed. you got to remember that. It's all about basic genetic uh, kind of breakdowns there. But you can definitely use that in eugenics and breeding programs as well. Oh, uh, Robert Brisboys. My heart candies are awesome. I eat them all the time. Uh, the only thing I'm not a big fan of is obviously, you know, you're eating a lot of sugar when you do that. Um, and, you know, my teeth aren't great. Uh, so I got a big broken one. I got to try to either get fixed or ripped out of my head. But uh, simply put, they're really good. I really enjoy them. Um, I'm really happy with how the RSO uh, binds into it. I make a lot of the RSO now out of the sort of the leftover press bricks for making rosin. Uh, so that has actually really increased the strength and potency of RSO. Um, and just made it a really tasty, sweet-smelling, wonderful uh, mix there. Uh, so we're actually going to be using some RSO made mostly from uh, le leftover hash pressed into rosin as well as flour that was pressed into rosin um, and be using that to show everyone this week how to make kind of some green dragon, uh, kind of an updated version of a Chinese old-school sort of tincture utilizing uh, high-proof alcohol and uh, RSO oil. So it's going to be pretty sweet. Uh, Raymond, uh, let them dry out, let them settle for a bit. Um, I'll give it a month or two, and then they should be good to go. Question, what's the best temp for two-week-old plants in veg state? 21 degrees uh, centigrade. I don't speak Fahrenheit very well, so ask Google. 21 degrees centigrade is the optimal, uh, the standard average optimal uh, temperature for most marijuana. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, dirt mat off. It is not, uh, you should not. It sounds like you used a colloidal of silver. I can never say that quite properly. Um, and yeah, no, do not consume buds that do that. Do not consume buds that do that. That's really, really, really bad. One second. There we go. Sorry. I accidentally clicked a chat bubble. Oh, no worries, uh, Raymond. All is well, my friend. Happy to help. <clears throat> so is everyone liking the fact that we were doing two uh, live stream shows in a day? One that's a little bit easier for certain people abroad and other time zones to kind of get into? <clears throat> Scooby-Doo, I have a crazy question, Unc. Is chronic a real strain? There have been many strains that have utilized the word chronic in the strain to my... Uh, experience in part in history, at least here in BC, uh, chronic didn't originate as a term of a strain. It meant just we did it. I mean, chronic was a very big slang word when I was in high school. Uh, you know, the chronic man, you know, um, definitely perpetuated by 2001, the chronic by Dr. Dre, one of the most epic Dre albums of all time. And uh, was a kind of a a game changer and also sadly a turning point that was sort of signaling the start of change of some rap to being a lot of the stupid rap you hear now. But you know, what are you going to do? I grow a Sin City Sour El Jefe plant and it's finished flowering. And as I was doing my trimming, I noticed some seeds. Will they be male or female? My buds turned out really good, really big. Uh, danced uh, 1,000, it all depends on whether they were, you know, were they a hermy pollination, were they pollinated somehow from other pollen that came in and into contact with them, you'll never know. Um, sometimes a plant will have no signs of hermying and it'll give you a seed or two. I call those the gift seeds. Um, don't necessarily throw them away because that doesn't mean that they're going to be unstable or even necessarily prone to hermying. Gorilla glue number four came from a hermy accident. That's the origin of that story. Um, so... Never throw them out. Just be, bear in mind the hypothetical possibility or plausibility of when you grow them out and use that to help you. Colloidal silver. Thank you, Too Drunk, Too Sloppy. I appreciate the phonetic spelling. I never seem to be able to catch the live chat anymore, so I'm happy to catch one finally. Hell yeah, Allison. We're happy that you're here too. We, you have been missed, my friend. 
Well, Dirt, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, it, it sounds like he maybe just did a misapplication would be my guess. Um, but you never know. You never know. What's up, Fry Guy 420? Flippy Dippy, what's up? Thank you for liking that. Yeah, and I'm thinking on nights where I don't have to go into town like super early for a callback audition. Okay. Um, I'll try to I'll try to push the start time of this show a little bit later. Maybe, maybe if I can find the energy within myself to do it, keep it open till like 11 or 12. But uh, oh yeah, that's one of the things I'm not very good at because sometimes uh, like I realize a lot of people kind of tune in and out of the show. Uh, so, if you want to get your own Pot Squatch Growers gear, you want to show us some support, you want to help us keep the lights on and keep things expanding and growing and going for all of you, well, check out PotSquatchGrowers.com. Buying the hats, buying the shirts, buying the grinders, buying the papers when they're available and any other new products that we bring to market, that is helping us to keep the lights on. Um, also, to help us keep the lights on and keep the channel going, buy the lights. That helps both my company and uh, Soul Strip as well. So, check those out. Um, yeah, so you can find all of that through PotSquatchGrowers.com. Uh, check that out, my friends. Uh, we also now have a Facebook group. If you want to check out the Facebook group, it's called the Pot Squatch Growers Community on Facebook. Feel free to join. Um, we have an Instagram now. I called ourselves on Instagram, the Pot Squatch. On Twitter, I couldn't type the whole thing, so I'm Pot Squatch Grow on Twitter or at Pot Squatch Grow on Twitter. Um, and on Instagram, we are Pot Squatch Growers. Uh... Glenn, are my lights on right now? Yeah, Glenn, I thought I just I just showed you the lights. They're on for another hour and 23 minutes. Yeah, Marcus Deegan, das ist der gute Scheiße. Gut gespielen mit deiner V-Titten. Yeah, buddy, congratulations, Marcus Deegan. Woo! Yeah, Texas Pete in the hizzy. Yeah. What's up, Texas Pete, baby? How you doing? Uh, UW Purple. Uh, Lucent Sherby. What does UW stand for? I've got a feeling probably no, because I don't know what the UW stands for. I've grown a lot of purples in my day, though. I love purple strains. Did you see... Anything, even the tiniest of little nanner danced 1000. Okay, so like Washington State. Uh, no, no, I have not tried the University of Washington purple. I've tried BC perps, I've grown BC perps, I have BC perps. Uh, I worked with a lot of the proponents that went into the original GDP. I've worked with GDP. Um, I love purple strains. I just never tried the uh, University of Washington's purple. Uh, be crazy. That's bullshit. BC Bud wins. But we're always going to argue that. That's one thing we'll never agree on. Everyone's going to think their Bud's the best. Um, but I will say though, um, no, BC, BC wins. Um, I've traveled all over the world and worked with a lot of growers and there's a lot of amazing growers everywhere. Um, but some of the shit I've seen here as being a BC grower myself and being here over the years, um, you know, the, uh, some of the real true breakthroughs kind of came through here and California too, to be fair. Um, you know, but, uh, I would definitely respectfully, humbly say that BC bud will always reign supreme. Um, but in this modern day market of all of us furthering our knowledge all over the world of genetics now freely flowing throughout the world, uh, you know, fuck man, we may not hold on to the title forever. Look at, look at Canada and hockey. Now we don't automatically win anymore. Fuck. We're lucky if we do, um, because everyone else is catching up now. Uh, so, you know, Sadly, that may happen to BC Bud in the long run, but I'll still say we take the cake on that one for now. But that, you know, I got to say that I'm a BC grower, man. Like... <laughs> oh, booger alert. Maybe. I think I, did I get it. Sorry, I know it's a little gross, everybody, but I'm an honest prick.
Uh, see, be, but be crazy. I heard that G13 was not developed in a university laboratory. My, my sources on the strain's history, it was, in fact, developed by the American military. Um, some of the stuff was sourced from a university, but it was finished in military labs. But, again, who fucking knows? None of us will really know. We weren't there. We just have the hearsay that we've all been passed on of kind of all this random shit. But, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, Allison Williams, Bud uh, Light, I am drinking now. Uh, well, one, I mean, it's a little bit more conducive to the fact that I work from home all day and I do things all day, so I drink, to be honest with you, all day. But not in like a, like a heavy way, like in a German way. In Germany, right? Like, I mean, you're, it's culturally acceptable to drink a few beers throughout your work day. Um, so I, I kind of adopted that. So one, it's a little lighter. Two, uh, the c calories are a little bit better. And as an actor and, and, and as an aging male who's kind of wanting to... Try to get back in slightly better shape. I'm 6'1", 200 pounds. It's not like I'm in decrepit shape, but I could certainly be in better shape. So, uh, But also, the main reason is PBR has been tasting very weird to me. And it's had this very odd... It doesn't taste right. Uh, but So Bud Light has been tasting right to me. The weird thing is Budweiser hasn't been tasting right either. Regular Budweiser has been tasting oddly of bananas to me recently. Um, that happens sometimes. It could be the beer. It could just be me. I don't know. Um, but <coughs> Bud Light's been working for me recently, so. One second here. I'm trying to play catch up here. Uh, Be Crazy says, we said uh, getting Beasters Bud from Canada. I'm not clowning. Washington is hardcore. We're in between everybody. There's lots of underground uh, growers here. Been doing it since the 70s. Dude, that's what BC Bud is. We started the indoor early 70s indoor grow revolution. Uh, we had to. There was too much fucking rain here. Uh, we had to get good at indoors uh, or else we were going to get raped with powdery mildew. I'm not saying that the 70s revolution didn't happen in a lot of places. It did. However, historically speaking, uh, BC was, was the leader of it. Um, we were doing it. We may not be the world leader now, um, I would still think that I think we would be. I think if there was a Weed Olympics um, and Team BC or Team Canada, which would be made up of people from Canada, mostly BC growers probably would be my guess. Um, I still think we would take the win for now. Not saying it's going to stay that way forever, uh, but especially historically speaking. Not to minimize or play down uh, all the activists all over uh, America, Canada, and the rest of the world that have fought for our rights and developed new techniques and been beautiful growers and proponents to the forward movement for all of us. They have been, okay? But again, BC grower, gotta have my pride on, right? And there's nothing wrong with a little friendly competition between us. As long as we keep it civil, professional, and respectful, and a little bit of fun, you know, um, then I don't see any harm with us having, you know, friendly competition. <laughs> Ja, ich spreche ein bisschen Deutsch, ich fürs Leben in Bayern für zwei Jahre und sechs Monate. Also, mein Deutsch ist nicht so gut und mein Deutschwörter ist kleine Deutschwörter mit Englisch Grammar oder Kanadisch Grammar sprechen. But, aber die deutschen Menschen verstanden meine Sprache. Uh, Robert Brisbois, uh, you could do that in a number of different ways. Um, you could, for example, let's say you had two males and you were using one as a proponent female. You could take your first gen cross of that initial crossing, stabilize it for another one with a male of its own uh, respect, and then, then cross it through another one and then keep stabilizing it out that way. Um, there's a number of different ways you could do it, really. Um, so it's that's where part of the fun of breeding and doing intermixes. Like even if something is the same genetic mixture, if you do it in slightly different ways in development of stabilizing phenols through selective uh, breeding and eugenics, you can do some funky cool shit. So, uh, Scooby Doo, uh, High Times Bud of the Year. I used to put a little bit more value in High Times when I was younger. Uh, I think it was also too, because things were a lot stricter back then, and, and High Times was really cool back in the day for me. Um, as someone who's with where I'm at in my career, the fact is, like, how can they say best butt of the year? They're not testing or trying all the weed titties being developed in that year. So it's just the popular in thing of where they were, where they got to see it. So if that's less important to me now. Um, especially as I've realized how diverse the world of growers and stuff everywhere really is. So, uh, 
Oh, yeah. Some of the classic BC strains from back in the day, like I still grow them. That hash plant was an old school uh, BC derivative that we did in the last run, as was the shishka berry. Um, you know, and I was, I really loved those. Danke schön, Marcus Stegen. Danke schön. Thanks, Banna Cam. <laughs> Oh, dude, Philip Garcia, they're doing really well. The one Afghani is like this tall. She's like, she's definitely taller than her father is. Allison Williams, BC Bud, is it's it's a beautiful thing. I mean, in general, too, everyone in the grandma in BC grows pot now. <laughs> so part of the thing is, uh, yeah, see, Blob Jones, you can get in high times for $5,000. Therefore, I don't validate that at all. If I can buy an entry into high times that's bullshit if high times had integrity still and was truly trying to find the best strain or the best debts there wouldn't be a thing or if there was an entry fee it would be for like 50 or 60 bucks for a, like an actual judging contest for pure administrative submission um so five thousand dollars that's bullshit that's uh, i don't know that kind of stuff pisses me off but that's just i've got my own morals and ethics on how i think industry stuff should work um, that's part of why I do this channel. It's part of why I've created our company. It's part of why I've released lights. It's part of why I do a lot of things to be honest with you. But, uh, yeah, I actually have heard of the strain Pearl, uh, Glenn Earsley. Um, I've, I think I've smoked it, but to be fair, I could have just been aware of it, but I do know for a bare minimum, I am aware of it and that I've heard people talking about it. I don't know a lot about it to be fair. Uh, Mia Kwana, I don't shotgun beards anymore. I'm too old for that. Um, just not my thing. But the fact is, is I can drink, I can drink a can of beer if I want to almost as fast as a shotgun. So, um, ask my wife, I can drain a 20 ounce pint in a couple of seconds. I'm not, you know, so if I ever choose to want to ingest a lot of beer, I'm more than capable of doing so. Part of the problem is right now, I do have a, a broken tooth on the back end that I currently, well, I can't get fixed because I got other things to spend my money on. So I'm just kind of list reading it and hoping for the best. Uh, but so I got to be a little careful when I'm drinking the cold beer right now. You know what I'm saying? No, I feel you, Mikwana. I'm just being honest. Dude, I remember the original UBC chemo, man. The UBC chemo was a fucking thing. Um, it was an interesting hybrid of indica dominance. It was it was a cool fucking funk, man. And she had a weird funky musky mm to her. I mean, she was she was oh she was a nasty bitch. I haven't seen a real one of her in a long time. I've had a lot of people say, oh yeah, I've got you a piece of your chemo, and I'm like, okay, let me take a look at that. <laughs> nope, nope, that's not what that is. Because uh, certain certain smells you don't forget. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it may have some part of its origin story to a UBC chemo at some point, but it's been lost through interbreeding and people not paying attention to the perfection of what it was. Um, hard to say, Raymond, like if you mean like a hash plant, hard to say, but a lot of indica varieties do hail from those climates. Uh, it could do fairly well. Um, I'd be curious too, because like these Afghanis that I want to cross with this death bubble kush, it'll be interesting to see how they come out to see if they would work in a, in a desert environment as well. It's always fun seeing what they can do. Uh, Philip Garcia. Um, I'm sure it could do certain things. Feeding coconut water. I would say I'd be worried about the sugars in it, uh, for molding your soil out. Uh, and I've never, I've never done it and I'm not really sure what it would do to be honest. So I don't have tons of opinion. Other than I have skepticism, but also intrigue, if that makes sense or helps. Yeah, man, the UBC chemo was pimp. Ah, sounds good, Adam Squatch. I'll send you a, a text tomorrow uh, when I'm, when I'm uh, uh, on my way to my audition there. I'll see how your day is going, buddy. But thanks for tuning in to the two shows, Adam, and thanks for all your help. Uh, did my wife ever text you back? Not, I, you know, if it was an emergency, she'd keep calling. So I'm all right. Yeah, you are, Texas Pete. Fuck yeah, Texas Pete is stoned. <laughs> eat chicken. That's funny. That's very funny. Eat chicken. Oh, okay. 
So is it something that a lot of... So there you go. Bob Jones says a lot of the no-till guys are using the coconut and the aloe and shit. Cool. Good to know, man. Yeah, I mean, uh, be crazy. I, I was growing some of the original old school uh, bubble gum. Uh, was it on the last run? No, it was on the run before the last run. And just the bubble gum. This bubble gum was an old school original from back in the day, and it came out smelling like exactly like double bubble. It was insane. It was just mm, pink old school bubble gum smell. It was beautiful. Uh, ooh, do I use molasses in the granulate form? I haven't, Milkwana. But, I mean, I don't see why I wouldn't try it if I had some. I normally just buy normal, you know, unsolved for blackstrap blasts, you know. But, uh, no, yeah, I didn't even know, to be fair, that it came in a granulate form. But I guess that would make sense in that it's just cooked down and made into a granulated form. So I would say it would probably be fairly condensed. So getting your proportions on it might be a little, you know, pay attention to that when you're figuring it out. But that'd be cool, though. i dissolve it in water before I used it. Okay, sweet. Thank you, Adam Squatch. I love you, buddy. I appreciate that. Oh, man. Mo, uh, Mo Do 420. I remember the old school Juicy Fruit back in the fucking day, man. That shit was funky. Too sativa E for my like in terms of effects, but man, that smell and flavor, though, right? Like, whoo. It was some tutti fruity shit. <laughs> Uh, how can you tell if your flower girl got prego? The thingy that pops out the hairs is all puffed up. It could be having a seed noob grower 420, but it also could just be uh, sort of swollen calyxes or swollen uh, sort of uh, uh, under underlying pod sex. It's hard to say. You won't really know till the end. If it's right on the edge of the bud and it's looking really swollen, um, if you want to keep it and let that seed, if it is a possible seed mature, then leave it alone. If you're not worried about it, you can pluck that gently off with some tweezers, or if you have clean hands, do it with your hands, and then crack it open and see what's inside. Damn, Dirt Madoff, that is some creative fuckery. I like it. Yo, John Boy, how you doing, my friend? Michael Wiggins, what's up? SC Mike. What's SC mean? Uh, AFPAC and the Old School Breeder Association, not aware of either of that. I am aware of the strain uh, or the old school strain hash plant, um, at least its BC origins and, and, and derivatives that are from here. Uh, and we've been playing with. I just grew it. I've got some hash plant right here, and I fucking love it. Uh, that's what I was smoking last night's live stream. Uh, oh, that's wrong. There we go. There's some hash plant right here. Beautiful fucking strain. Oh, I loved this shit. There we go. Let's see if it'll actually focus for me. Of course, it's not going to focus. Sorry, everyone. I'm trying to focus it. Well, I'm doing my best. But yeah, this hash plant is sexy. Oh, fuck yeah. No, I'll check it, eat chicken. Don't you worry, my friend. Definitely going to check that out, my friend. I just kind of had a bit of a break. I had a bacon sandwich in between shows. Watched some Family Guy. Watched some other random shit. Uh, chatted with a few pot squatches and answered a few questions. And then, well, now here I am again. Hashtag boom. Ah. What's up, little red big smile? Howdy to you, my friend. Uh, nice, says Mauditz. Uh, beautiful. Yes, says Scooby Doo. Uh, are you going to try any kind of comparison grow video against those who shall not be named? <laughs> Marcus Jenkins. Their light burnt out. That light they sent me that I sent to Renee burnt out three days after he got it. That light lasted for one run. I've since had at least 80-ish 
emails from people saying uh, how their Mars crap burns out and is a piece of shit. Uh, so, you know, the fact of the matter is, is no, I don't think I would because their shit sucks. Um, and it would just be mean. But if they really wanted us to, we would. They can try. I mean, I'm not necessarily opposed to it. I've got lots of room on my license here where I could do a side experiment. If they're brave enough, I definitely would, because my lights beat HLGs. So. <laughs> I mean, if they want to. <laughs> Oh, man. Sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, that was a good laugh. Yep, that's true, Texas Pete. We're doing the second show of the night. We got this. I got this. We can do this. Uh, Unc, I love to get high and watch the Trailer Park Boys. Laugh my ass off. Classic. Hey, man, nothing wrong with the Trailer Park Boys. It's a fun show. <coughs> Okay, sounds good, man and Cam. Thanks for tuning in tonight, my friend, and enjoy your movie, brother. I will talk to you soon. Question. Five weeks approximately till Harvest Medusa Strain Organics only and outdoors. Uh, uh, she's doing pretty great. Any suggestions or tips at this stage? Uh, well, Little Red, um, given that you're kind of midway through your flowering cycle, um, give her some molasses, give her some other uh, things. Uh, she's going to get magnesium uh, hungry. Uh, and potassium hungry uh, for flour more than likely so making sure she has readable easily accessible nutrients there's many things you can use which are organic grab some banana peels let them go brown make tea it's very nice um, if you really want to be all anal retentive make sure you're using an organic banana for that but uh, so there's a lot of little tricks you can do uh, to kind of help boost that, uh, that are not going to change the organic nature of, of, of your feeding spectrum. Uh, but yeah, just making sure that those kind of required flowering nutrients are there and, and, and that would be good. Oh, hell yeah, you chicken. I wholeheartedly concur. And I also very much enjoy red green Mo dude. <laughs> I'm curious about this plant, dirt. You might have. Okay, one second here, everybody. I'm just reading. Super Thrive's great. Um, I normally just like these, you know, if I need a little bit of a boost, kind of like a Super Thrive would do, I just use Rooting Hormone and, and uh, dissolve that in my water and water on with that. Damn, John Boy, that does sound like a really fucking crazy hefty blunt. It sounds like something that's going to smack you in the head with like a baseball bat. Very sexy. Cold press hash become a thing of the past. Um, I don't necessarily think so. I just don't think it's commonly done a lot. Um, Because, like, I personally really like hash. I mean, I make most of my hash into extracts just because it's a little bit easier sort of on the go a lot of the time, especially if like I'm out and about doing business and you know, have my little e-bulb plus in my pocket and then I'm good to go. Uh, especially on sunny days, cause I'm extremely photosensitive with the migraine, which isn't a migraine, it's my neuropathic pain that I live in. But, uh, so it makes it a little handier, but I like a lot of good hash. Um, I do like doing some cold pressing on my hash myself in the past. Uh, but you know, it's, I just don't think it's commonly done. I don't think it's extinct. I don't think it's gone the way of the dinosaur, but if we're not careful of retaining certain knowledges and processes, then, well, yeah, then I think, you know, we will lose certain skill sets, right? All right, John Smith. Sounds good, man. Have you messaged me already on uh, Snapchat, John Smith? Hell yeah, little red big smile. I love it. I like that. Uh, how'd you put it? So I got to get MacGyver and stuff, making a way out of no way. Well, oh, Ram ass. Hi, Posquatch. One of my flowering plants stopped taking water. Seems to be dying. That's weird. Ram ass. 
Uh, send me pictures, stat. I'll check them after the live stream. Without really seeing what you're talking about, it's a little bit harder to help, but uh, let me know. Also, little red, big smile, just for the fuck of it, and something that you might find enjoyable. So MacGyver was shot here in BC many moons ago. I think it was shot here. Well, the old mechanic lives here and has always lived in BC for a long time, so I'm assuming it was shot here. Someone check that for me. I'm pretty sure it was shot in BC. But the head mechanic of MacGyver drinks at the bar that I was the head bartender at for a long time. Ooh, it's pissing rain now. Shit. Um, but he's actually going to gift me, because I'm not allowed to sell them or do anything with them, because they're still owned by the production company. But... There's nothing wrong or illegal with me personally owning them. So he's going to gift me, if they've survived in their storage box, most of the original uh, scripts that were given to him as the head mechanic of MacGyver, because I loved MacGyver growing up. Uh, the only one he wants to keep is the 100th episode. I'm not allowed to have that copy, but, like, that's fine. I said, as long as I can read it once, then he can have it. So that's pretty cool. Okay, one second here. I think I've missed a bunch of shit. Yeah, so Ram S, send me pictures stat to podsquatch420 at gmail.com, yo. Uh, Texas Pete, a lot of the traditional hash styles are still very much in use in, in, in other parts of the world, right? So there was a great thing that was released many moons ago. I don't know if it was originally released on YouTube or if it's just on there now. And again, by now, I watched it years ago on YouTube. Uh, but watch some of the old Strain Hunters episodes, particularly some of the episodes where they went, like, or like the one where they went to India and talking about traditional Indian hashish techniques. And like, it was pretty cool to watch, man. It was super cool and very educational. Hell yeah, Danny Snyder. You have a beautiful evening, my friend, and thank you for tuning into the show. Uh, Lesher, haven't tried them, but, uh, you know, I'm just going to stick with the, the, the squash lighting system because I know they're tried, tested, and true. They may be new to all of you, but, uh, you know, and I know they're going to rock and roll, and I have faith in those rigs. Plus, we've got a couple of rigs we're developing. One will be hopefully released in a couple of months, and another one that uh, may be in the new year, but I can't talk about it until they're ready, so we'll just leave it at that. Just, we'll just say they're fucking cool. No worries, be crazy. Welcome back. Batteries are a bitch. Okay, one second here. I had no idea it would work, but it was... Yeah, no, hell yeah, Dirt Madoff. It's a very intriguing story. I mean, obviously, all the sugars in that would definitely provide, like, a simple basic energy for the plant for show. Noob grower, I don't pH, dog. Don't pH, bro. Don't need to. And I'm soil. I'm a soil grower. I mean, if I was running hydro, I'd definitely be pHing because I have to. But uh, no, I'm a, I, I prefer doing soil. I've done uh, aquaponics, hydroponics, aeroponics. Um, I'd love to do a deep aquaponic system built into a house one day so my whole house is like self-sustaining. That'd be a goal for me personally if I ever had a few bucks to kind of build something fun in my aging years. One day maybe I'll get there. That'd be sweet. The goober, oh, Texas Pete, you silly motherfucker. <laughs> the indie episode was great. They're just rolling the rosin on their hands all day. No, hell yeah, you chicken. They just go up and they start stroking the weed titties. These old hashishans. And they'll spend, these guys would spend all day to make like 8 to 14 grams. And they'd make it to that. But that was like a currency for them. And each, each, each hashishan kind of style maker he would go out and he'd have his own field somewhere in the mountains and they were his fields and his strains right and it was like everybody like left each other alone and usually and that was kind of their thing and then that's how they provided for their families and stuff and these are just simple guys like farming out in the wilderness on a mountain and then they go and they make hash all day but they wouldn't even make a lot of it right like and that's how they survived and that was really cool i loved learning about that it was super cool i very much enjoyed it Ah, uh, Modites, it was great to see you. Say hello to the baby from Uncle Potsquatch. Have a wonderful evening or day or night, wherever you're at, my friend. Keep it sexy and we'll talk soon. 
Oh, I feel you, John Boy. I'm running a reverse osmosis system at my crib, so it's coming out like 2 to 4 ppm. Uh, and uh, I don't even remember what the pH is on it. Six point something. It's happy. I like it because I've got a realkalining filter that, that it's spitting it out pretty good at a, at a decent uh, kind of uh, uh, pH there. I don't even remember it because I've been living here now 16 months or so, so who knows. I'm not having any issues, so I'm happy. Sadly, no, Robert uh, Briss boys, uh, I cannot do that. One, edibles are still illegal in Canada. Uh, and two, um, well, you know, even if it were legal in Canada, I'm, I wouldn't be a licensed person to do that. I just hold a personal medical production license, so. Oh, shit. Dottie Davis, Mrs. Potsquatch is in the house. She's taking up the cash. She's dropping the cash at the pub right now. She's checking in. It was 11.05 that she said that. This is 11.06. Dottie Davis, do you still have the show on? Am I oddly with you now? Because the fact is, our pub, everyone, is very haunted. I should not say this if she's listening to this. It's probably not going to help. But we're all here. So Jenna, Dottie Davis, Mrs. Potsquatch, we're all here with you. The whole Potsquatch Growers Army that's on this live stream, at least, is here with you. So ignore the weird noises in the pub. Yeah, everyone, some crazy cool things happen at the pub. But I'll probably not tell those stories until she's done there. Because that'd probably be nice. Sorry, honey. I love you. <laughs> uh, Scooby-Doo, pH can be important in dirt. <coughs> um, if it's an organic setup that's self-maintaining kind of quote-unquote little system... Uh, you know, you should be okay if you've done it properly and not have to worry about that when using synthetic nutrients in a soil based medium or also in uh, doing cocoa or other things like such, um, you know, pH does become a thing or can be a thing. I don't really worry about pH unless I start seeing pH issues in terms of what's being exhibited within the plant itself. Blood or net, fuck it. I have to check that out, little red big smile. That sounds fucking epic. I do know you fairly well. It's almost like I'm your fucking partner. <laughs> hey, man. John Smith, all I know is that I have very... Uh, well, I have results I'm very happy with, and I'm never ashamed to whip my titties out whenever there's a gathering of the witty, weed titty grower people. I'm always very proud and happy to show what I do, and people are, you know, I, I, I hold my own. I, 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 I stand where I stand, and I'm not worried about it, so we'll leave it at that. I love zombies in general. A zombie cuckoo would be fun, and 200 milligrams sounds like a good time. When I went to the Adam Sandler concert, I had three of my 100 milligram candies. Well, because I went for beers before, but then the line to get beer at the Adam Sandler fucking thing. It wasn't a concert per se. It was more of a comedy show with all the boys, and then they did some music and shit. But uh, it was very frustrating for me because the fucking line for beer was like 100 billion feet, and I couldn't get beer. So I just ate 300 milligram candies instead. Uh, Chris Maddox, uh, one thing, like if you get really bright screaming red stems, often that's a big indicative issue of, of, of pH issue uh, that is starting to become systemic throughout the plant. Um, that usually is going to exhibit before it starts exhibiting in your leaves. Uh, pH can also exhibit in your leaves in a bunch of different ways from sort of damaged areas to changes in weird color and other things you're going to exhibit. Uh, but, you know, a big indicator to watch out for. Purple stems is a good thing. I like purple stems. Genetically, a lot of plants do, and even on their own, without cooler temperatures. Uh, but often, a lot of genetics, especially genetics out here in this way that kind of are more local, um, you know, when you're properly feeding them, you're giving them a bit of a chill, keeping them thick, the, you get these bright purple sort of striations through your stems, and that's a good thing. Bright, screaming red often is very bad and indicative of pH issues. Uh, one second here. T-O-Y-R. Getting some nice clean rain out there, eh? Not like that acid rain that we get down in SoCal. No, yeah, we get, I live out in the valley and out in the woods, Lesher, so, um, yeah, no, very clean, beautiful water. I actually would love to eventually set up like a water collection system here. I had a bucket that I was going to use for it, but then our neighbor asked if he could have it, and I was, and it, I was he was like going to use it for, for watering his plants and stuff, and I couldn't say no. This guy had been kind of mean to us all the time, and I was like, well, you know what? Maybe this will be the olive branch where he'll start being less of a dick, so I let him have 
have it. It was a giant soy sauce container I got for free. I'm pretty sure I can find another one, so I'm not worried about it. Ooh, um, Nathan asks, it depends on what uh, nutrient lockout or what your lockout's been caused, but this will help most lockouts. Uh, get yourself some humic acid. This is called GPH uptake by Green Planet. It's humic acid. It's a humic acid concentrate. Um, but what humic acid does is it allows to reduce the stress and make it easier for the plant to utilize nutrients and suck up what it needs into the plant without stressing itself out. So it's, it's kind of like, uh, 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 you know, a de-stressor. It allows the plant to power read a little bit more. The one thing to be careful with that is it's very easy. Like for example, when we went away to shoot that Punjabi music video for a few days and I wasn't here to feed with the humic acid that we've been using, um, there were some definite nutrient, nutrient deficiencies when we got back that is sort of setting in and there was this kind of middle section on some of the violators that was like really yellow uh and or light green at least kind of yellow and it wasn't really all that healthy you can go back in videos and see that they totally bounced back and are sexy now uh but that's just one thing to bear in mind when you're using shit like that too um uh, yeah derf mad off i don't know i'd have to i'd have to see it in person to believe it the grafting of the cannabis to a tomato plant i know you could make a branch of a cannabis plant live on a tomato plant they're genetically very similar and you could totally probably pull that off uh i think there's something like something stupid like 97 ish percent genetically the same so it in you know you could make a branch live off of it but but actually intermixing it that way i don't think would work i think it would just be like a weird frankenstein of sewing like a, a head onto something you know what i mean like tying it into blood systems Oh, hell yeah, be crazy. I mean, that's kind of always been my approach, right? That's how I do it as well. Uh, I def have red slash perp stems. Perps is good. Uh, some red sections could be a bit of an issue. Try uh, maybe upping your feed a little bit and uh, playing with your feed ratios first to see if that corrects your red stems before you start worrying about there being a, a, a pH issue. Splicing, Allison Williams, is where you take a branch of one plant and graft it. It's also known as, uh, it's, it's actually called grafting. I call it splicing because... It's like you splice two parts of the plant to do it properly and connect them together. It's called grafting. I call it splicing in my head. But um, so that would be a Josh or pod squatch term on that one. Um, but where you actually will connect and attach that one branch uh, onto the plant. A lot of orchids, for example, uh, breeders will use techniques like that as well. Um, but it's, it's nifty. You know, it's kind of cool. Hell yeah, Tex Pete. Gotta love collecting that rainwater. Isn't that illegal in America now, though? Collecting, like, solar and collecting water and stuff? Or is that just in certain parts? Uh, okay. Yep, new growers on it. Also called grafting. What's up, Pot Squatch? Sorry, I'm late. Hashtag boom. No worries, Stuart Harper. Welcome, my friend. Keep it sexy. How you doing? Uh, Lesher, as long as the required uh, nutrients in the deficiencies are still in the soil and they're just being locked out from the absorption to the plant, yes, it would help the plant to absorb those. Uh, Scooby-Doo, most rainwater is usually fairly good. Um, so it depends on where you're at, I guess. I mean, I don't really know your area very well in terms of what your rainwater is like, but rainwater is usually a fairly safe bet, to be fair, but... Uh, Uh, oh, Lesher, uh, the, this specific product is from Green Planet. That's who I've been using now since I can't buy G&H anymore because they're owned by corporate loser douchebags who are trying to control the pawn industry. Uh, it's called GPH Uptake uh, Humic Acid Concentrate from Green Planet. This one is not friendly to a hydroponic system. They do make another version of this shit, uh, which is conducive to utilizing in a hydro system. This one's more meant for using on soil. Yeah, see, that's what I thought. America, I can't believe America's done that. Collecting natural rainwater and solar energy and crap like that and making shit like that illegal? That is the stupidest fucking thing. Fuck the American government for that. Like, they think they, like, like come on now. It's rainwater and sun trying to own and tax everything literally under the sky and under the sun. And the sun itself. Like, what the fuck is that crap? If it's on your land and you're doing it on your land, there should be no fucking issue with it. I like the way you think, Dirt Madoff. 
Yeah, Texas Pete, look into that. Because I'm pretty sure it is, man. Solar, water, all that crap. Your government's fucked you in the asshole. White Feather Grow, I don't know if it's all of the U.S. or if it's just states that have done this. Okay, I'm not 100% sure, but I know that there's at least places in the states where this is a thing I've read is supposedly true. I haven't been nor seen to be able to confirm that, just read it. And I went, holy shit, what the fuck? Hell yeah, Stuart Harper. I'm stoked to see how the titties are stacking, my friend. <coughs> Again, I got to get better at remembering to do this in the show. Any of those uh, any of those of you who are just joining us and you want to rock or support the Potsquatch Growers, help us keep the lights on, check out the website, potsquatchgrowers.com. Uh, that's P-O-T-S-Q-U-A-T-C-H-G-R-O-W-E-R-S uh, dot com for getting your hats, t-shirts, uh, soon to be rolling papers, the grinders that help support us here, uh, Pot Squatch Growers, as well as you can find the link there to getting your very own uh, Pot Squatch family uh, grow lights brought to you by Soul Strip and released in co partnership between our two companies. So uh, that's the way to check that out. Uh, we also have a Facebook group, the Pot Squatch Growers Community, on Facebook. Uh, we have an Instagram now that's called the Pot Squatch. We have a Twitter that's called at the no at Pot Squatch Grow because I couldn't fit growers in the handle. Um, Insta's Pot Squatch Growers. I think I got all the thingies. I think I did. But there you go. <laughs> uh, be crazy. A normal citizen uh, or a normal household. It's not per person. It is per postal code. Okay. Um, you're allowed four plants per postal code. I have an ACMPR medical personal production license. So I am allowed more than that. Because uh, I'm a medical patient in Canada under the federal medical system. So, yeah, the normal Canadian household gets four. Uh, no, Chris Maddox, you can definitely use it uh, in flower. I've never actually played around with it much. This is the first time I've kind of been playing around with it, to be completely honest with you. Um, so, yeah. Oh, Dirt Madoff, I don't disagree with you. A lot of the world's like that. Sad but true. Oh, there you go. Well, where did I hear that? Because I'm, I'm sure I could have sworn I've been hearing that. Like, And not just reading it, seeing it in certain places. But as we just covered it, a lot of mainstream media is utilized or manipulated in a tool or misrepresented information often mm -hmm. to try to control a response. One second here, I'm just reading. Uh, I don't think advanced nutrients suck. Their number one competitor is Green Planet. I find advanced nutrients are overhyped. Uh, I find they run a smidge personally a little hot for my liking. Um, but in most circles out here and out this way, they are the preferred go-to. Um, if I didn't use Green Planet and I had to pick something else, I would go advanced nutrients. Uh, I prefer Green Planet. I'm into Green Planet. I've been really enjoying the last few runs, been working with them and working with their different products. But um, yeah, if I, if I couldn't, let's just say Green Planet all of a sudden stopped existing and I had to pick something else, I probably would switch to Advanced Nutrients, to be honest. So, uh, so um, yeah, I don't think they're bad at all. I don't think they necessarily suck. I think they're a little expensive. But then again, um, you know, a lot of really good nutrients are and people have a right to make money as well. So, um, I prefer Green Planet, but I would, you know, I don't think they're shit. And I mean, I would use them instead of Green Planet if I couldn't use Green Planet, if that makes sense. Ah, okay, Texas Pete. Thank you for the clarification. Okay, so wait, they're sending you water that's infiltrated with lead and heavy metals, man, it can. But then if you try to give yourself an alternative option, they'll jail you if you collect rainwater in Flint, Michigan. That's fucked up. 
That's seriously fucked up. Is that legit, dog? Uh, flippy dippy, hell yeah. Power to the ACMPR, my friend. Um, General Organics GO Box. Is General Organics an extension of General Hydroponics? I'm pretty sure it is. Is it not? Heavy 16. Is that a strain, Dirt Madoff? Heavy 16? I'm just asking. Yeah, um, flushing agents, I've been playing around with those recently. I've always been predominantly a, a water flusher my entire career, but um, I have been playing with some flushing agents, and I actually don't mind them. I don't use them too heavily. Like uh, I, I use them to kind of accentuate certain days of my water flush, shall we say. Um, but uh, And part of why I've been enjoying that is because there's not really anything bad in it. So let's say a water mo molecule normally looks like an L, and you got a bunch of L going through the capillaries of your plant cleaning everything out and scrubbing it out. All right. Imagine if you had like four L's as a singular scrubbing molecule. So it's got like four L's scrubbing now. Um, that's kind of the concept behind utilizing a flushing agent to work with a normal H2O flush. Um, I've enjoyed it, to be honest with you. I think I'll keep using them for now, at least. I've been enjoying my experimenting with them and I'll continue experimenting with them. Yeah, dude, that's that's weird, man. I don't know, man. Some of the stories that come out of come out of America in terms of just different areas and how things are happening and shit. I don't know, man. It's heartbreaking if 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 if, if a third of it's true. Uh, it's very heartbreaking to me as uh, kind of well, we as Canadians, you know, we often, you know, we're kind of like cousins to America. You know, we're we're related, we're similar. We're not the same, but we're not completely different either. You know what I mean? Um, so. Yeah, but if that's like, yeah, like if a third of some of these stories that, you know, that I hear coming out are true, it's, it's heartbreaking and scary as fuck. Well, the dogs have been creating a huge mess while I've been doing this show. Sorry, everybody. I'm just playing tidy up a little bit here. One second here. Oh, it's a newt brand. Okay. No, then I haven't. I haven't tried it. I haven't tried Heavy Sixteen, uh, uh, and I'm not aware of their pro te or their products for the gross, you know. But uh, never tried it. Oh, everybody, also too. Um, I would like to announce and congratulate uh, the newest moderator uh, of Pod Squatch Growers. I don't know if Texas Pete's even realized that he's a moderator now, but Texas Pete, you're one of the moderators now. Uh, congratulations, Texas Pete. Um, rock and roll, my brother. Well, see, that's the thing, Texas Pete, though. You know, there should, a government and a people should be able to cover all the bases, I think. And if things are run properly, um, how are you now a moderator? Because I made you one, silly. Uh, but... Like, I don't know. I don't think there's an excuse for, for, for at least the government to not be able to do things and take care of things. I mean, look at the fucking amount of money that's spent so stupidly in my country, in, in America, in a lot of countries. You know, if the government gave its head a shake and also stopped paying fucking government employees so fucking much. And I'm not talking like the grunt working people who make the system work. I'm talking the politicians. I'm talking the people in power who basically work a couple months a year, if that, if they're fucking, you know, like, let's be realistic here. And then get paid exorbitant amounts of monies, uh, exorbitant amounts of salaries, salary, uh, housing allowances, and all these other kind of crap. I mean, if I was a politician, I mean, yeah, I'll take I'll take X amount for my fucking job. But I don't need to make hundreds of thousands of dollars to be a politician. I don't need all of these things. We should be putting that money back into the system to help people and help the system be a healthier, better system. That's how it should work. Because there's more than enough money and more than enough people power in the systems to actually do a difference but then again maybe that's the reason why you know i'm not a politician i probably would never get voted in <laughs> dude dirt madoff that's fucked up i can't believe that man that's insane no, it's true, Chris Maddox. I mean, in the same in Canada right now, under Bill C-45, our Prohibition 2.0, our new set of uh, laws, 
Um, you sell 31 grams of pot to someone, you could face up to 14 years in prison. But then, you know, we put a pedophile away for three years and then let them out in, in 12 months on good behavior and probation. Yeah, that makes sense. Fucking stupid. We get stupid shit like that here in Canada, too. Well, you never know. If the zombie apocalypse happens, I'm ready. I've got a few of my, or a couple of my knives even. I wear them usually when I'm at home. You know, especially if I'm going out for a walk in the woods. It's my friend Fatty there. This is my normal walk around work knife, you know what I mean? Get business done. Very handy to have in your pocket, especially when you're working in the lab or the workshop. This one's more for going out into the bush a bit. But, yeah. I think I could take out a few zombies with that. Or my favorite bat. One of my favorite things, too, is, is for fun, you know, you know, make zombie-ready weapons out of random shit you find. It's kind of like being in a movie, right? Going to the workshop, making a, you know, kind of a contest. Like, man, I got 40 minutes to improvise something, and anything I see in here, go! <laughs> Yo, does anyone here live in Flint, Michigan? And if they do, can they send me a picture or a video of this water that you're talking about? Hell, it'd be interesting for you to send me a sample of that shit so I could get that shit actually tested here in Canada from a fucking independent lab where I know you can trust what it's saying. To be fair, I could perform the test myself by, uh, you know, form of electrolysis and I, at least to a certain point. Ooh, Christmas strain. I don't think I've ever really thought of a strain for Christmas. So no, I mean, I don't think so. I love getting stoned at Christmas. I love... Having drinks at Christmas and eating Christmas food at Christmas and Christmas baking and, and uh, you know, food. I love friends and family and shit and stuff. And I love cooking for people. But uh, I don't know if I have a specific, you know, Christmas strain and something that I love. But Well, see, Dirt Madoff, that's fucked up. How can any person be in power in the state or in the federal government hear about this shit and not just go do something? Like, dude, have a shit fit. You know, that's the thing. If we the people, I think my wife is home, I hear my Cadillac, there's a shot bearing in the one belt tensioner, and I hear it. Um, but it's like, you know, if, if, if we all unified as the human fucking race, man, we could overthrow crap and change this world over fucking night. Okay, and it's like, you know, we don't have to fucking take it. I'm not saying anarchy, I'm not saying pull a coup, but I'm just subtly saying here, if we unify and stand up, things will change. Enough of us just have to say we're not going to fucking take it. We're not going to take it anymore. Someone sent me uh, Flint, Michigan water. It could be in a tiny little vial. I don't need a shitload to test, but I would like someone to send me some Flint, Michigan water in the mail. No, thank you, Dirt. I appreciate that. Welcome home, Mrs. Potsquatch. Thank you. Did you know that the American government has, is poisoning the people of Flint, Michigan? It's been four or five years now. Heavy metals and tons of lead and everything like that. Yeah. And nobody's done fucking shit about it and holding it accountable. Oh, like 80% of the population was poisoned before they even found out. Oh. That's our government, man. So the people, are, the, the people of Flint are going to send me some water because I'm curious to test it. I want to see what's actually happening. That That's super fucked up. Manic, if you've got a, can a picture of that Flint, Michigan water, send me it to uh, me in an email. Here, say hi to the masses for a minute, if you don't mind. Oh, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, you better lights so they can see you. Uh, I want to thank everyone for uh, being there while I was dealing with the scariness of the pub. That is the scariness of the pub. <laughs> it's a haunted pub. How's everyone doing tonight? Uh, enough about me. How are you? You always go around trying me. 
Yeah, I find it weird that uh, the government is trying to, like, really crack... Like, I get cracking down on, on guns and stuff, but people are under the impression that they're going to be taken away. That would be kind of terrifying. We have really strict gun control in Canada, but per capita we have more guns. Um, yes, the pub is really haunted. Um, there was one night Mr. Pasquatch and I were closing by ourselves there, and he said, I'm going to the bathroom. I said, okay. I was done. I was a cook at the time, so we finished at different times. So I was just chilling, and uh, I heard footsteps above me, and I thought that maybe he went to the offices. And then he came out, and I was like, were you upstairs, like, doing something? And he's like, nope, just came out of the bathroom. And I was like, oh, right on. It was this very quick-paced uh, walking, and then it just stopped. It's kind of weird. Nice. Hey. <laughs> Aaron Brockovich. Was that about Michigan? I was going to say, wasn't that the whole Aaron Brockovich thing uh, about that? Or something like that? Similar area? Yeah. I haven't seen that movie in a really long time, and for some reason I just... The details have escaped me. Oh, well, I, I saw it when it came out. Yeah. But... Ooh. <laughs> Natural selection. Nice. Oh, that's called government selection. Oh, uh, um, I should have read that entire thing to you. What? Uh, I'm assuming it goes by Dirt Madoff. Yeah, Dirt. Yeah. Dirt. My theory of everybody in a speed location is armed. Who the hell is gonna try something? Uh, and, uh, if there are people out there that dumb, well, hashtag natural selection. That's oh, I can right. agree with that. Yeah. Look at the whole Pokemon Go, man, and everyone playing the game and walking off cliffs and stupid <laughs> shit or manhole covers and shit. Oh, man. Me, Jerry Lynch, I would play you a tune, but I'm too tired. I have to get up at 530 I got a call, early call time. Yeah, I got to get up early. Robert's picking me up at 6.30. So. Okay, so look at us being early birds. Uh, really? Because I was going to ask him. That's like, just the guy hiding in the attic. quick song? Because I was going to ask you to do that too. I was Honestly, say, like, I just want to put my feet up. I've that's been... fine. That's fine. I'll take care of this. I'm stuff. a tired monkey. I'm sorry, guys. That's I'm okay. sorry to disappoint. I'll sing you a song. Sing us a song. You're the pot squatch man. Titties, titties, titties. Oh, titties, titties, titties. That's marijuana titties. This is about weed, not prestices. We all got titties, though, too. Mine are fairly hairy. Not, yeah, you know. <laughs> That's my song. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Let's read some shit here. See, that's the uh, see Chris Maddox. That would never happen in Canada. There's uh, mandated vaccines aren't a thing. Certain vaccines should happen. Okay, um, I'm not an anti-vaxer. Certain vaccines are very fucking important. That's how we abolished diseases. The fact that the whole anti-vaxer movement has grown to the way that it has is the reason why certain things that should be eradicated are coming back. However. Um, I, I, I'm a big supporter of being skeptical as fuck on all things and huge medical testing to be done on things before we go starting injecting it to the human populace. Oh shit, Lesher, uh, once I've done my cigarette, I'll go find them for you. These are Yorkie Poos, so they're Yorkshire Terriers crossed with uh, toy poodles. <clears throat> Uh, Bradley Wilcox, Mrs. Podsquatch actually does, I pretend. This is a 1953 Hammond uh, M2 organ, gifted to me by the rock god uh, David Stone from the band Rainbow. What's up, Sussex UK? How you doing, my friend? Oh, yeah. Oh, I can give you ghost stories at the pubs. I can give you ghost stories all day. I actually have been toying around with 
launching another completely different YouTube channel for the fuck of it. Because I've always been very into ghost hunting and fucking around with that kind of shit too. Plus, it's just fun. Plus, I think I'd be really entertaining if I was scared in like a weird abandoned building with a bunch of equipment and shit. <laughs> Probably scar myself, but you know, well, you know, you win some, you lose some. But uh, all right, do we want to do a story time with Pot Squatch instead of a story with Mrs. Pot or a song with Mrs. Pot Squatch? Do we want a ghost story there? I could do a few quick ghost stories if everyone would like. Load their bongs, have a hoot, and I could tell you a ghost story. I think I've seen The Conjuring 1 and 2, but I can't remember. I'm bad with names. Would everybody like a little ghost story with Uncle Pot Squatch there? We can do a story time, but we all got to vote for it, okay? Allison's down. Allison's in, you know, on, 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 on board with that. While we get the vote going here, I'm going to... Well, Stuart Harper... I got some really fucked up stories to tell you that actually happened, so let me roll a joint. I think we need some hash plant for this one. Let's roll a little bit of hash plant here. <coughs> oh, by the way, baby, congratulations on work for tomorrow. One second, everybody. Let me roll my joint. We'll do story time. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a storyteller in a sense by trade. I'm an actor, writer, comedian, but like storytelling, the power of storytelling was something I always very much uh, studied in school. And in terms of my performance art, I've always very much enjoyed. Uh, and telling stories, I mean, I'm the son of two priests, for fuck's sakes. I mean, what is preaching really, right? So let me get my joint rolled here. And uh, we'll we'll do a story time with Uncle Pot Squatch on some ghosts, some ghost this is. All right, so the weed is busted in our beautiful, wonderful Pot Squatch Growers grinder. Get yours at potsquatchgrowers.com. That's not an open one. Where's the open pack? There's the open pack. Here we go. Using the rolling paper sent to us by Adam Squatch there. One second here, everybody. I'm almost done rolling my joint, and we can play story time. All right. All right. Peace out, dirt. Rest well, my friend. Shirley Q. Liquor. No, I don't know that one, Texas Pete. I do not. All right. So do we do we do we all vote uh, yes? Ah, what smells better than a taste? John Smith, a nose. <laughs> all right. So we're we saying. See, you know what? Hash plant. I got some hash. I could have put some hash in there. I could have put some rosin in there. I could have put some RSO oil in there, but I didn't. I could have put some CBD crystal too for fun, but I didn't. But so, are we doing story time now? We're, we're on board with that? Well, let me pound this beer to make it extra fun. And then we're going to grab another beer. And we're going to go sit outside in the rain, in the smoke pit, where the lighting is slightly more ominous. Or at least we'll go with that. Yes, that's right. Stoners, pack your bongs. Stoners, pack your pipes. Stoners. Right. Right. I meant roll. 
your joints. And then we're going to tell you some, some scary ghost stories, all right? Hell yeah, that's true. We've never done formal story time on Pot Squats Growers. Ah, uh, yes, us, a, a group of, of adults of all different ages, races, social graces, and superstitions all over the world getting excited about getting stoned and having story time. Ah, uh, we've come full circle as a people. All right. Well, let's do it. I'm not going to like my joint until we go all outside. Well... Wedding cake, you say, eh, Allison Williams? Well, a number of the ghost stories of truth, of actuality that happened are going to be surrounded by an odd connection to my dead wife. I mean, we were separated, but we were still legally married. I'm going to tell you the story, and this is a true story and a real story, actually, of what happened. If it seems to you odd that I'm not getting sad by telling it, well, I've come to terms with it, and I'm a great performance artist. I'll tell you, Pot Squatches, it was a little over a year ago. I was working at the Dudney Pub, and it was a bit of a weird night. Things were being a little bit more active than usual. But not too bad. Just a weird energy in the air more so, I would say. Anyway, I went out for a smoke break while I was bartending at the Dudney Pub, the Church of the Blues. And I was sitting there having a cigarette, and I looked down at my phone. And I saw this picture of what looked to be like a Photoshop picture of my ex-wife. And I figured, well, it looks like someone has stolen her picture. I should go to her Facebook page to see if she has a picture like this, and then if she does, I should let her know. At which point I went to her Facebook page and discovered she was dead. Her Facebook had been turned into a memorial. I was still technically legally married to this woman and the legal next of kin, but somehow she had died and I didn't know. At first, it seemed a little surreal. I seemed a little confused. I walked back into the pub after said cigarette, wondering, hmm, is this real? Is this the thing? And that is when things in the bar started going amuck. I was bartending, and all of a sudden the cable was going out, and lights were being weird in the pub, and all the equipment for the band was being weird, and then all of a sudden, a martini glass, three slots back on a, on a slider rig, like old-school bar style, flew out at my head and just missed me hit the floor but didn't break and bounced back up and i caught it this is an old school martini glass it was astonishing i had nine people at the bar watching this and they went um holy shit did that just fucking happen i kept getting weird phone calls to the pub and no one was there and just a weird sound on the line and that was really odd to me because that had never really happened before at the pub. And then the other Josh who worked in the back of the house comes out to the front of the bar and he comes up to me very aggressively and he goes, did you just throw a fucking bucket at me? I said, what the fuck are you talking about? Well, I just asked everyone in the back of the house. Nobody threw the bucket at me. Had to have been you. I said, Josh, I been out here making these 16 chits for drinks that you see here i've been here for the last 12 minutes cranking out liquor but i didn't throw a bucket at you at which point he realized it wasn't me and he just kind of gets this weird look on his face it was a plastic bucket kind of like a two and a half three gallon bucket went flying down through the kitchen and almost hit him in the head roughly 20 30 minutes after the martini glass came flying at my head in the pub so anyway then the terminals crashed and couldn't we couldn't get them to reboot for the longest time the, the atms were down everything was just fucking up all night so you know we get through the night and it was kind of closing time uh, and you know and most people have left and when we're sitting there and, and i'm doing my cash and doing these things and all of a sudden you hear this huge clamoring 
up and across uh, the upstairs of the bar. There is a guy who lives above the bar, but his apartment isn't where we're hearing the walking. It's over there. And it's just back and forth, back and forth, big clomming and slamming. And then all of a sudden, the paper towel dispensers in the washroom start going off and start going off and start going off. Then Janelle, my co-worker, is in the beer store, or not in the beer store, in the, the beer cooler. We have a liquor store there as well, also with the cooler. But she's restocking it. And then silently, there's a bottle of Bavarian-style Pilsner. My ex-wife was a Bavarian German girl. Shatters right next to her. She didn't hear it, though, or see it. All of a sudden, she no noticed water or, like, liquid going past her foot. And she looks beside herself. And this bottle somehow shattered without a sound next to her into a bajillion little pieces. And I saw, I, saw, I didn't see it break, but I saw the aftermath. And she just came out. She was like, what the fuck was that? She's like, I swear to God, I did not hit it. I didn't do fuck all. The next morning, I found out from my ex-brother-in-law, still legal technical brother-in-law, that, that Lisa had killed herself. Two months before that, on July 28th, two days after we had talked on the phone. And uh, that was the night I found out that my separated wife, but still legal technical wife, had died. About two months after uh, she had died and her family buried her. And it all started with me just seeing this random picture that looked like her, like like spitting image, but with like Photoshop, big titties and ass. She didn't have big breasts or a butt. And I was like, that's fucked up. Like I legitimately thought this picture was her. The reason why I shared that these stories of ghosts will have a connection throughout Lisa is because I have a number of stories to share from our time together of things that me and Lisa experienced. It all starts first when we lived in a little house in Holland, in Utrecht. The house we were living in had been a squat for many years, but my friend had been the squatter living there, and then there was a fire. And then through the fact that there was a fire at this house, which the firefighters could never figure out how it started, um, fixed it. And because of all the money he put into the house, the state awarded him the property. So before I moved into this house, and lived there for three or so months, two or three months, I think we lived there. About three, probably. Um, I had been there a few years before that, and I had been sleeping and staying the night there at my friend's house. I was sleeping in the living room. Now, I'll be honest with you, the living room was already creepy because all the light bulbs in the living room were red. So, you know, that has already got a fairly ominous feeling to it, you know what I'm saying? I woke up in the middle of the night, unable to sleep, and I looked up, and there was this driftwood, this big piece of driftwood on the wall my friend had put there years ago. And I knew it had been there for years. He sent me pictures when we were teenagers when he got it. Like, this thing did not have living bugs in it. I shit you not. There was hundreds of these weird, little, jittery, moving, black, little, weird bugs. All of a sudden, it just started erupting out of this thing all around the room. And I'm sitting there, and I'm stoned, you know, like... And I, I'm sober, like I hadn't drinking anything, and I just woke up in the middle of the night, and I'm smoking this joint, watching all these things, and they started jumping around the room. They never touched me, but I just sat there watching this, and I'm like, I don't know if I'm having like an acid flashback or something right now, but I only did acid once, and I didn't even hallucinate, so I think I'm good. Um, this is fucked up. The next morning, I brought it up to him, and he started laughing at me, and he goes, oh, yeah, you know, that's just a thing that happens. That's all he would say to me. Anyway, long story short, I forget about that. Years go by. I met a German girl. I moved back to Europe, and I'm fucking married. My buddy wants me to come MC for his company and, and do that at drum and bass and jungle show. So we come, and we move in, and we rent a room in this house. A weird thing about this house is couples would fight in this house, tooth and fucking nail. They would fight horribly. And then they would leave the property and get like 20 or 30 feet away. And it's like, boom, this black, ominous shit was lifted off them. They couldn't even remember why they were fighting. Second they got back to the house, within an hour, they'd be fighting again. There was something. I'm, I'm a bit of an empathic, kind of shamanistic type person. I'm very sensitive to things, but I got a good sort of personal shield. But there was something in that house. I first met it that night when the bugs 
were jumping out of the wood that was years old. There's no way. I checked it the next day in the light. There was no bugs. There was something in this house. And I believe that it was what caused the fire in the house. Now, we started having a lot of really weird shit happen in that room we were staying in. Not only the fighting, but also just sort of this ominous oppression. It was hard to even get yourself to do anything or feel uplifted about anything. And the weight, this dark weight. Uh, no, there was not the sulfur smell. Well, maybe in the attic a bit, but it was a very old house, so it was hard to tell whether that was that kind of smell. But you don't need the smell for it. It was a demonic possession in this house. I'll say it. Um, I, I don't use that word lightly, but it was that's what was in this home, and it lived in it lived in the attic, is what I was able to tell. It lived in the attic, and it didn't like people going in the attic. But in order to have hot water to take a shower there was this old little electric heater and you'd have to crank it once you'd have to wake up super early go crank it and then go back an hour and a bit later and crank it again so you could have at least a 10 or 15 minute shower of hot water to clean yourself now my wife did not like going up there so it was my job to go up there uh every morning to do that and i was very aware of this fucking essence up there this weird no, it wasn't the European pussy. European pussy, from most of my experience, is quite tasty, to be honest. Um, but uh, it was fucked up. Now, this is where I'll share some some stuff that I don't really t share as much about this part of the story. Um, weird stuff would happen with Lisa, and 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 uh, she, from what I can tell, I would call it a demonic possession. Uh, as a shamanistic type of person, my wife had been possessed three times while we were, were married. Um, and the first one happened a few days after. we There was this one moment where we were actually having sex, to be honest with you. And just standard missionary position, you know what I'm saying? And, and all of a sudden, instead of seeing my face, she saw this weird, twisted, distorted, demonic kind of a face, and she just started screaming and melting down. And, like, I thought we were him. And then all of a sudden, like... I was just like, so I'm just sitting there like, um, um, what, 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 what? And she's just screaming bloody murder. And I was like, so I got up and I kind of stood back just kind of like, I was like, whoa, like, are you okay? Like, hello, hello, hello. And she kind of came back to it. And then, you know, she had that weird kind of initial basic little kind of thing. But then we left that house. And then we went to Ontario. There's a bunch of these stories, by the way. Like, this was like a chock full, you know, two and a half, three years of stuff. Are we still enjoying story time, everybody? We're having fun with this here? Should I, should I keep going or, or should we save it for another time? Do you want to know what happened next? These are all real stories and legit, by the way. <laughs> all right. Well... Uncle Potsquatch needs a cigarette, children, before we continue the story. But the next chapter of the story takes us away from the land of Europe. It takes us away from the land of Holland. I'm telling ghost stories instead of their song. We're doing story time for the first time on Potsquatch Growers. One sec. One second, everybody. What's that? I'm just doing... Oh, yeah. No, I'm just telling you we're doing the first ever ghost story time on Pot Squatch Growers. I'm creeping everybody out. All right, everybody. One second. I've got to find my smokes and we will get back to continuing this ghost story for everyone. All right. So the next chapter of our ghost story, okay, takes us down to the lands of Ontario in Canada. London, Ontario. So when we decided to come back and try making a goal of it in Canada, after making our first excursion to Europe, and then we actually made a second one back there after Ontario, and it was rather dumb. I showed up there eight weeks before she would show up in Canada. My job was to find us an apartment. So I went and found us an apartment. Loved it. 
kind of an older place, but big, big wide halls. It was like almost 900 square feet, two bedrooms. Not bad. It was in my budget. A little expensive, but it was in my budget. Perfect. So she didn't want us to buy any fucking furniture, right, before she was there. So it's like my Uncle Dave gave me a mattress, gave me a TV, and like a kind of a side table that I put the TV up on. That is all I had in this house or this apartment when I moved into it. So I moved in, we would buy furniture, we'd buy cutlery, we'd buy all that crap when she got there. So I had a kettle. I had one kettle and I had a tiny little coffee pot. I had one mug, one fork, and one knife. I didn't even have a fucking plate. Actually, I may have had one plate. But like, there was next to nothing in this house other than my beer, me, and my cigarettes. And so I lived there for about four, five, six weeks before she got there by the time I found this apartment. And weird shit would happen in the middle of the night. I'd wake up and I could have sworn I heard people in the kitchen doing things. Like things were moving around, but it didn't have anything to move around. And then one night I, I put some water on to boil, but I forgot to turn it on. And I fell asleep. Four hours go by, I wake up and I go for a cigarette. I'm almost finished my cigarette. And then all of a sudden I hear the kettle click off from boiling and start boiling and click off. This was a kettle that a miswiring couldn't have created this boiling because the switch needs to be pushed down to, to complete the circuit. So, that was fucking crazy. But it continues. So that kept going on, but I was not really, like, moved by it in a bad way. I was like, hey, there's some ghosts here. I was just like, hey, man, like, what's up, Rumi? You know, it's cool, you know? You lived here, I'm sure, at some point. I had no issues with you. Rock and roll, right? No, that night I was totally sober. I didn't have any weed. I couldn't find any weed at that time in Ontario, so I, I wasn't smoking weed. Just having a few beers and cigarettes at the time. Uh, um, as long as if, if you were to clone the original plant to make the clone from the plant that it is from seed, it will be genetically identical in terms of its phenotyping. Um, but there's many different phenotypes, even in a stabilized strain. So no, it won't be identical. Typically it could randomly work out that way, but not necessarily, but back to ghost stories. So Lisa finally arrived and these things kept going on and we bought furniture and we bought things and things weren't going very well. We were fighting a lot. She was kind of crazy and a lot of weird things were happening. One night she lost the shit, locked herself in a washroom. I mean, I'm not going to attribute that to the haunting stuff. That was just kind of stuff to do with her stuff. But there was a night where things were getting really heated between us in a fight. She was being really out of line. And I was down here at one end of the hallway. And she was standing about 15 feet down in the door frame of the, the washroom screaming bloody murder at me. And I'm just sitting there feeling like so much, just like, oh my God, I don't know. How can I keep handling this? Ah, uh, we're doing ghost time. First time ever, Andrew Chaplin on uh, Pot Squash Growers. Everyone asked, you know, we, we voted. We're doing some ghost stories. So I'm telling some true ghost stories from my life. So she screamed at me and I'm just looking at her, just feeling like I don't know how I can take any more of this. And it's almost like an invisible hand. It looked like grabbed her and slammed her into the door frame. And instantly, though, the second I saw that, like, whatever had been in the apartment just got aggressive at my, my, my technical wife at the time, regardless of how I was feeling towards her. So I basically handed her 40 bucks. I said, go down to the pub and have a beer down the way. I'll call you. And then I kind of had a shouting contest with whatever this thing was in the house. But it was crazy. And I had never seen anything like that. If I didn't know better, I would say I was full of shit. And that was one thing that happened there. Of peyote Wi-Fi. No, I have not heard about that. But in terms of if you're talking about when you use peyote or other things, like DMTs, right? That comes from peyote or tricosterous cactus is accessing the universe and connecting to other things. I am aware of what you're speaking there. Yeah, it's weird, yo. Like... 
we, you know, footsteps. I've seen a lot of weird orbs too. I've had when I lived in Germany, um, and her parents' house was really haunted too. And you know, those big old locks you gotta like turn over 360 degrees three times. You'd have to do that to get the lock to actually flip. So there's no way for that to accidentally lock itself. And and doors would lock themselves from the inside. I tried to call her father in my broken German and tell him, and uh, and he was like, "Dude, you're full of shit. There's no way." And then he came home and saw that it was true. You know what I'm saying? It could be. Um, but Allison Williams, uh, it is my belief typically that uh, bipolar disorder, um, more often than not, is more of a genetic uh, predisposition. Uh, and it's and bipolar is more of a blanket term for a lot of different things that are kind of similar and fall under a sort of a realm or a spectrum. Um, I have a lot of friends who are bipolar. I was misdiagnosed as bipolar for many years. Turns out I'm just really high functioning and different. But uh, I've been med free now for 13 years and, and actually really healthy. Um, the meds were actually almost killing me in the end. But, uh, you know, growing up, you find out stuff. Pharmaceutical uh, drug pimps. But um, my guess would be, I think more often than not, uh, a lot of those disorders within the blanket term comes more out of uh, genetic stuff, then coupled and exacerbated from life experiences, obviously, too. But that's just my humble two cents. Oh, no. Chris Matt talks. Uh, it is not following me. Um, there's a lot of dark things that come at me a lot. Always have been since I was a kid. I'm a very spiritual person. Um, even as a kid, I, like, and I don't mean this to sound weird, but like I saw spirits as a kid. I learned to block it out. And, um I've had a lot of dark things come at me. Uh, if you ask my wife, there are nights where I have like these weird, crazy dreams and it's where I'm getting attacked by stuff. I wake up cold sweats, like I've sweated through the whole bed and just these weird, weird dreams of these weird twisted groups of people kind of coming at me and attacking me and stuff. And they're weird. I've had them throughout my life here and there. Um, but not that thing. That thing's back there. It, it didn't want to leave. That thing wanted to stay in that house the thing we met in the London apartment, I think, was just kind of this old guy who who passed away there. And I had this vibe that he really just had a real issue with women, uh, which was part of why when she was really abusive towards me, when I didn't really do anything most of the time uh, at all, um, was probably what exacerbated that scenario. The stuff in her house, I think, was probably just weird past relative stuff there. Uh, and it was definitely a D word what I met in that house in Holland, though. But it, it stayed there. It, it liked there. It stayed there. It's happy there. It's where it likes to live. Oh, yeah. In Texas, Pete, a lot of times, like, when you get in fights with people, they're going to throw stuff like that at you. So never take that, you know, you know, take everything with a grain of salt, right? We all say a lot of stuff when we're angry, too. third possession chris um the two last ones happened because she wasn't really possessed in the london place it was in uh both at her parents house and the one that was the most hardcore one that was scary and it was like a movie and that's where i almost struggled with it because it was totally like a movie like the exorcist or some shit uh mush mush Ghosts are merely, you know, uh, if you look at science, energy cannot be created nor destroyed. Um, there is an energy field which makes up the essence of the living, activated tissues of this body. I believe that that energy field goes on uh, to energy existence. So that's how I'd explain that. Um, but we were at her parents' house and it was weird and it just came out of nowhere. We kind of had a fight, but all of a sudden, like, she just started saying this weird stuff. I kind of started talking to her and, and then she got really weird. And uh, I all of a sudden just had this dark, overwhelming feeling in the room. And I just looked at her and it wasn't her looking at me. It's different eyes. You know, different eyes. All of a sudden we're there. And I was like, holy shit. I'm getting goosebumps remembering it. And so I was like, Oh my God, I know what's going on. I think this is kind of like a bit of an oppression, possession kind of a thing. So first I was stupid because I was scared because it freaked me out. 
and I got aggressive with it. I got really aggressive, thinking that was the right way to handle it. And it was most certainly, it was, it was, you could call it that. Sure, the human spirit works mush mush. Um, and you could have, but it was just, so I started getting aggressive. And God, it was laughing every time I got aggressive at it. It was laughing and full of joy. And then boom, and all of a sudden it hit me. And I thought about, you know, growing up as son of two priests. And I thought about what the basic teachings, even though I'm not really putting any merit in any world religion um, or the Greco-Christian God per se, but a lot of people in the world do believe in that. So like the psychic field of that still says something, I think. But I thought about the basic lessons, right? Which is of, of it wanted, or well, maybe it wanted that. I don't know, Chris. But what I'm saying is, is it, I remembered love. Love. And that's where things changed and got interesting. I just smiled back into these eyes. So I'll show you how I smiled after. So first, this is what's looking at me. And I looked back when I realized that the violence and aggression was exactly what it was wanting. I smiled back and I said, it's okay. You are loved and you are forgiven. And that's all I said. Literally, that's it. I kept res responding with that. And after a few times of responding with that and sticking to my guns and not letting the things it was seeing and the aggressive crap to come back. And I just kept love. And I just kept picturing a big smiling love ball on my head, basically. And kept telling it that it's valued, it's loved, it's forgiven. And it got very angry. Saying weird shit. Stop that with that fucking Jesus bullshit. Blah, 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 kind of crap. And that's where it got really weird. Like totally like, totally like out of like crazy possession movie and shit and then eventually i just kept going and it seemed to calm down and she kind of calmed down and then i just sort of grabbed my guitar and played a song and kind of basically said the same kind of thing really with a few little lyrics and just kept playing until all of a sudden she woke up and she put her hand on my shoulder she's like hey holy crap it's 10 30 what's going on what the fuck wasn't it like six or seven o'clock like and she had no memory of any of it. She had no memory out of any of it. And then I told her what had happened. And she was like, what the fuck? And I was like, yeah. I'm a good writer, but I couldn't make that shit up. <laughs> it was an interesting, crazy, weird experience, you know? So and that was a real one. No, I got I've got other other stories that I've experienced too, but that's those those are kind of some of the best, most intense ones throughout my life that I've had. Um, pretty crazy stuff. I know it sounds crazy, but I I lived through it, man. It was real. So, welcome to the first time ghost stories and story time with Uncle Pot Squatch. Halloween is soon to be here eventually, and therefore we're having fun. <laughs> <coughs> Of course you may, uh, Rad Tom eighty three. Go for it. Uh, Peyote Gorilla. No, I have not heard of that, Andrew Chaplin, but I am intrigued by the name. Yeah, I know. There's energies about right now from me telling the stories. They'll be okay. Mr. Splacky Valley, you can go back and watch it, though, my friend. That's the great thing about this. Well, Mio Kwana, it's all right. I'm not worried. My, I've blessed my property. My property is safe, and I also live on First Nations indigenous land. It's uh, There's a lot of good things here. So I feel pretty, pretty, pretty comfortable.
Oh, yeah. Well, Raymond, I've got cats, but also, too, my puppies, if anything, seem to be some of the most sensitive little poopers uh, that I've ever seen, ever, like, things show up. Because, like, the one thing I've learned from other mystic people and stuff over the years um, is that they've said, you know, you've got the very strong healer, powerful light energy that's a threat to the dark to you. And so there's a lot of dark shit that follows you because you're a threat to it. But there's a lot of good shit too, so don't be afraid or anything. It's just kind of a thing. So I've kind of always been aware of that. I was pretty plagued by it as a kid, you know. Um, I was pretty scared. Like, I was scared of the dark until my, you know, early teen years in certain ways, you know what I mean? And and there was just this thing I was still coming to terms with. And, you know, um, a lot of weird things happened when I was a kid. And, uh, you know, just in terms of ghosts and crap or weird shit. And, like, you asked my parents about it. And, uh but, you know, it's just been part of my life and part of my story. You know what I'm saying? Well, thank you very much, Allison Williams. Coming to an audiobook near you. <laughs> yeah, I also got to say, I got to jet in a couple of minutes, everybody. Um, I got to be up really early in the morning, too. I got to go uh, to my audition callback. I'm going to meet the director for this thing. So, um <clears throat> rock and roll um but there was a uh, someone was wanting to uh someone was wanting to ask a girl question and i'm going to answer that who was it uh it was uh rad tom 83 wants to ask a girl question rad tom ask away my friend if you are still there thank you very much uh robert uh Brizoise. Uh, I won't lie to you. My my bank account would not uh, be upset for me booking another acting gig. <laughs> It'd be okay with that. <laughs> well, anyway, my friends, uh, I'm trying to wait for that question so I can I can do that uh, quick question there. You still there? Uh, shit, who was it? I'm going Rad Tom eighty three. Uh, Mr. Splacchiavelli, to be honest with you, no, mine doesn't, but I also am very selective in terms of picking things with pretty heavy terpene profiles too. I have grown a few things in the past, obviously they don't have as crazy terpenes initially or take time for them to kind of receipt themselves, but usually, uh, no, no, it doesn't. Question is what spectrum and what percentage intensity? Um, okay, so Rad Tom, if you're talking about how hard you should run your drivers, you've got a Viper 300 timer series. I need to know what the actual wanted draw on that. Uh, manufacturing settings, but still stretching. Um, well, stretching is a natural part. Stretch is, is going to happen with plants. Some plants stretch up to 100 to 300%. That is a genetic thing. Um, it's not necessarily your lights or having your lights too far back. Um, in terms of Calvin coloring, Calvin color, uh, if you're going to go with the singular spectrum to go with, go 3500. That's what we're using on my double squatch uh, grow lights that we're installing there. And that would be my one that I would prefer to uh, use typically if I'm going with the singular Calvin color set of diodes on a grow light. Um, so that stretch, I think, by and large, is, is just your genetics, okay? So what you're going to need to do, though, is if you're really outgrowing your space, tie those ladies down. You gotta kind of tie it up, bend them down, bend them up, do it um, to try to control that. Um, how far into flower are you right now? That's okay, Rad Tom eighty three. A lot of new growers are here and part of the Pot Squatch Growers Army, and I'm here to help my friend and do anything I can to try to help. Rad Tom eighty three. Why don't you shoot me some pictures to my email? That's Pot Squatch Growers uh, four twenty at gmail dot com. Um, I can take a look at that uh, and get back to you, uh, and then we can have a little. Uh, you know, I can give you some one on one sort of answers to certain things and help you with that. Uh, but anyway, my friends, um, how many plants do you need to get through a season? Uh, it depends on how big I grow, Andrew. <laughs> it's not how many plants you have; it's how you grow. Um, but anyway, my friends. Simply put, um, I've really enjoyed this live stream. I've enjoyed doing two different live streams tonight. Um, I think we're going to go forward and, and do that. Um, 
and keep doing on, on days where I have the time to do it uh, and where I don't have to be up too early in the morning or doing it earlier at least, uh, the double tap. So we did the North American kind of time slotted show. We started the one at 10 p.m. my time. Probably not the greatest time. We could have gone a little bit later for the start time maybe uh, for most of Europe and the rest of the world. But we did our best to trying it out. Everyone's uh, tuned in, had a, you know been really supportive and been really wonderful. And I really appreciate that. Uh, to all of you, my Pots Watch growers, um, Mush, mush, it should be, but you got to remember, when you pick the basic shipping thing, my my government's postal system is a dink, and when it comes to international post, uh, it takes a little bit of time for it to get there, but it will show up. Uh, I, trust me, they will show up, um, and if they don't, let me know. First, I'll yell at the post office, and then I'll get you something else, and I'll send it super fast or something else, and we'll take care of that, my friend. Uh, but, it, you know, to get your pot squash grower swag, the hats, uh, or the shirts, the hats, the grinder soon to be the rolling papers as well as to if you scroll down on the main page you can find the link to buying our lighting systems now that we've released uh go to potsquatchgrowers.com my friends and that is a great way to help us if you like what we do here if you enjoy what we're doing uh, and you want to show support in some way uh you know buy a hat buy 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 a shirt buy a grinder uh if you want some pimp uh the most affordable professional grade lighting tech on the market buy one of odd lights uh you know we're here to support you and walk with you and that's part of what we're doing my friend and anyway everybody be crazy we'll get there one day buddy working on it and stickers and rolling trays will come when i have the money to afford them texas pete i just don't have any money right now to uh, order new product lines until we sell more product to be honest uh all my money's tied up in what we have currently uh for the store so anyway my friends uh much love keep it sexy don't be afraid to take risks don't be afraid to be yourself. And that's right. Mush Mush is right. Join the Facebook page if you're on Facebook. We have an Instagram. Our Instagram is the Pot Squatch. Uh, no, it's not. Our Instagram is Pot Squatch Growers. Our Snapchat is the Pot Squatch. And our Twitter is Pot Squatch Grow or at Pot Squatch Grow because I couldn't fit all the characters in there. And uh, yeah, the Pot Squatch Growers uh, community on Facebook, everybody. But keep it sexy. Keep it real. I'm going to go get a little bit of rest and uh, make it into town tomorrow for my callback edition. Here's hoping I might get a little bit more work because, you know what, I, I would be all right with that. But anyway, my friends, Uncle Pot Squatch loves you. Keep it sexy. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you hopefully well before next Sunday, but we'll definitely see you next Sunday for two live stream shows. Much love, everybody.